Welcome everybody. How are you today? Uh, hopefully we get through class tonight. There is a major storm overhead. I think Mike uh, sent them down, uh, sent the rain down my way. Mike Smith, did you send the rain down my way, man? Because there's a big old storm heading down here. And um, uh, the storm's crazy. Anyway, so it just hit and I thought, oh man, I hope we make it through tonight. So hopefully we all make it through and uh, everybody is doing well. Um, so uh, having a discussion in the chat uh, earlier with uh, Harvey. Harvey, yes. Uh, so you're going to see the same methods that Garrett over at 3D Print Farm used uh, with regards to using GIMP and uh, the big GIMPing um, add-on. Uh, as well as uh, talking about uh, the Norton method uh, by Nikki Norton. Uh, so none of these techniques uh, that we're doing are mine or my creation. They're created by other people. Um, but in those videos, uh, which were amazing videos, uh, great information. Uh, by the way, 3D Print Farm. Uh, he does a lot of 3D printing, but there's two specific videos on his website or on his YouTube channel uh, at 3D Print Farm where he talks about making money with your laser and he talks about uh, laser engraving tiles, right? Just ceramic tiles and things. Um, and uh, there's two methods uh, that, that are used, and one of them is called the Norton method, uh, created by Nikki Norton. So shout out to those guys. Uh, Nikki is an authority when it comes to, uh, you know, painted tiles and white tiles and engraving on white tiles and things. Uh, so if you ever get to look him up, definitely check him out. Um, but, um, uh, you know, uh, Sean Murray, shout out to him for creating the add-on, the big, uh, <clears throat> the big Gimpin add-on for uh, GIMP uh, photo manipulation software to help with processing images and things for laser engraving. So way to go to them. And then of course uh, Garrett over at 3D Print Farm for you know uh, making those videos and showing the methods and stuff. Now um, I'm going to be showing some of um, uh, of Garrett's video and kind of comparing it to my results and things. But in those videos, once they process the images and all and uh, get ready to take them over to laser engrave, uh, they're using a small little laser engraver, four watt laser engraver he is, uh, but he's using Lightburn, uh, the program Lightburn. Well, we're using Vetric, right? So um, I wanted to talk about the process of bringing it into Vetric with the new Vetric 10.5 uh, laser module and uh, some of the settings uh, and and everything and some of the adjustments that need to be made to create the tool pass for the laser engraving, right? So what we're hoping to do is to take, you know, uh, simple ceramic tiles and create nice laser engravings. So this is a white tile here. So there's the end result using the Norton method, right? Uh, and um, and then, of course, uh, painted white tile. This is painted black and uh, jungle green, just like uh, you would have seen in um, Garrett's video. And Garrett used the Incredible Hulk as one of the examples and everything. Uh, let's uh, let's see if I can pull up uh, Garrett's video here and. OK, and as you can see, uh, you know, that method um, with the painting with the green and then the black and then laser engraving, it kind of just burns that black away and pulls out that green and all. And so that was kind of my first experiment. I actually used the same photo and everything. And, uh, you know, his was a four watt laser. Mine was a six. So, uh, you know, played with settings and everything and uh, the results. I'm going to have to turn off my green screen for this because it won't show up with my green screen on. So stand by one second. Uh, let's get rid of my green screen. I say get rid of the green screen, but that's my green screen behind me. Um, so I could show this. Now you see, if we look at a comparison uh, side by side, you see how dark my results are versus how brilliant green his is. Uh, my settings weren't set. Uh, enough to really get through that black into that uh, 
that jungle green, and I'll show you the paints and everything we use uh, to really bring out the brilliance of that green. Um, Garrett did, you know, with his settings and everything, uh, did a fabulous job of really getting through that black and bringing out those brilliant greens and everything uh, in, in his example. Uh, so, um, you know, there's still some adjustment that I've got to do uh, with mine to be able to get to that, you know, that layer that I need to get to that green layer that's underneath the black uh, to bring out those details because I really want to bring out those details much better. And it's not just the laser settings, it's the image settings, setting the, the contrast and the gamma and everything and kind of getting those images just right so that we can really knock it out of the park. Right. Um, so we're going to talk about that. And so this is just kind of a, uh, a look at these two methods uh, that Garrett talks about, the Norton method uh, in one of his videos, and then just the standard engraving using the uh, Sean Murray's um, uh, the Gimpin, the big Gimpin uh, add-on and stuff, using those methods. And then what other manipulation we may have to do to get the, the details we want. Now, um, for the uh, the Norton method and everything, I didn't have a whole lot to do. I did have to do some photo manipulation to clean out the background and on. You'll see that here in a bit. Uh, but we're going to talk about the software. We're going to talk about where to get the software. We're going to talk about where to get the uh, the add-on, the big GIMP and add-on for the photo processing for laser. Uh, I'm going to give you those, you know, provide you with that information. We're going to talk about uh, the uh, different paints, uh, that, uh, you know, that I was experimenting with and where I got them. We're going to talk about all that and just go into a little bit more detail, right? So that's what class is about. And we're going to go through and, uh, we're going to process a photo, uh, and, um, take it through the whole phase, right? So hopefully you'll enjoy this video, stick with me and, uh, we will, we'll, we will go from there. So the, let me put this back into place. Um, so the first thing we want to do is uh, let's minimize uh, Vetric. And this can be done in Vetric, VCarve Desktop Pro and Aspire, any one of the softwares that have the 10.5 laser module uh, to uh, engrave. Now, if you have bigger lasers other than the six, I'm talking specifically kind of like looking at our six watt laser that attaches to our digital wood carvers um the uh the six watt laser you know low power laser and all for engraving tiles which this is this is engraved in, into the tile which is phenomenal uh and uh you know so the quality once again i mean wow right i was just impressed with that uh so i've i found a new thing and what we're gonna do is i thought okay the four by four tiles are are cool Right now, I know it can laser engrave on, on four by four tiles. Now I want to put, I want to build a frame, and I want to put a bunch of tiles together, and I want to create one big picture on all those tiles. So each tile will have a little bit of the design engraved on it to create one big wall hanging art. Right, that's where I want to take it uh, and things. So we're gonna look at that, and um, cool. All right, so the first thing that uh, I want to uh, say is uh, let's get back into, let's go into uh, uh, a larger screen sharing mode where I'm smaller here. And um, aside from the Vetric software, uh, the GIMP photo or image manipulation software uh, can be found at GIMP.org, G-I-M-P.org. It's free. That's cool. That's the cool thing about it. It's a free download. So if you go to GIMP.org, uh, you would click on the download button here. Uh, that'll take you to the download page. And I use the download directly. I don't do the BitTorrent uh, download GIMP directly and uh, download uh, that software. Now, uh, once that software is downloaded, and let's open up GIMP here on the screen, uh, we need to uh, get an add-on uh, a an add-on to uh, allow us to manipulate those images and, and do all the work and all the dithering and all that stuff to make them laser ready. 
Uh, now that add-on happens to be called the Big Gimpin add-on, <laughs> and that's by Sean Murray. Uh, and um, that can be found uh, at uh, Sean Murray's uh, the website Infinite Laser. Now the Big Gimpin add-on, the add-on module, the plugin—that's the word I was looking for. Plugin, the plugin to the Gimp. Uh, it's not free. It's thirty bucks on sale for thirty bucks. So I bought it, uh, you know, last night. Uh, and, uh, you know, downloaded and everything. Uh, but, uh, so it's 30 bucks. Uh, Sean Murray did a great job of creating the process where it's very simple for us to import the photo, size it, open up the add on, uh, create the size and the resolution we want, click a button and all the other work to get this image laser ready is done and processed by this add on. Right. So for 30 bucks, well worth it for me. I don't know about you, right? So um, once that uh, the the big Gimpin plugin add on is, and and again, um, I what I will do is I will copy this link and I will paste it into the chat. Okay, so that's the link to the add on. And then GIMP.org, I also put that link in there. That's the actual GIMP photo manipulation process. Um, okay, so it won't let me put the link for GIMP.org. So let's try www.GIMP.org. It might not let me do that. Let's see here. Okay, no, it won't let me post that. So GIMP.org, G-I-P.org. All right, thanks, YouTube, for that. All right, Um so, uh, anyway, gimp.org, and then you'll need this add-on. All right, let's uh, let's pull this out of the way. All right, so once we have uh, gimp uh, in, uh, we gotta we gotta download that add-on, unzip the zip file, and we gotta go into our edit and preferences. And in the preference window, uh, when it opens up, we're going to go down here to folders, folders at the bottom, and uh, click the little plus sign. And that's going to open up all the different brush folders, dynamics, and things like that. And we want to come down to plugins, plugins. And in the plugins, we're going to single click on this uh, plugin folder right here at the top of the list. And we're going to click on open in file explorer. So it'll open that folder up uh, in our file explorer window. And um, in our file explorer window, it's already got the plugin highlighted. We're just going to open it up. And those files, those uh, Python files from the big gimp and uh, big dat, big uh, the big Gimpin uh, uh, plugin. When we unzip that, we're going to copy these files uh, into the plugins folder of Gimp. Uh, we're going to copy and paste them in there. Okay. Once you do that, you're going to restart your program. You know, close the Gimp down and restart it, and then you'll see the big Gimpin add-on right here at the top of the screen. Now I'm going to go bigger. Uh, I'm going to go bigger. I'm going to, I'm going to change my screen resolution so you all can see this because otherwise it just won't be no fun for you. Uh, you'll be like trying to squint your eyes and see things and a uh, big shout out to everybody that's joined me. Hey, Michael, hopefully you're having a good night, son. Enjoy yourself. Don't give your mom and daddy a hard time. All right. I don't know why I said son, but all right, let's see here. Uh, we need to change the resolution to 1820 by 720 or 1280 by 720. Wow, that's a big screen. Oh my goodness gracious. Um, and let's go back in here to GIMP. So now you should be able to see things uh, much more clearly. All right, so now we're here. Uh, we've got the we've got the add-on uh, in our GIMP and now we're ready to process a photo, right? That's it. That's, that's, that's all we need to go along with our Vetric software uh, to 
process a lot of different photos uh, and get them laser ready so we can bring them in. So we could do that work, some of that work uh, to an extent in Vetric. And I'll talk about that when we get into the Vetric. We could do some of the photo manipulation, the dithering and things like that. We could set that up. But the way this is set up, it's, it's very easy to uh, do it in here. You'll see in just a second how easy it is. And then take it to Vetric. Right. And then we just, you know, import the photo or open. Yeah. Import the photo and, and, and create our toolpath. So let's go ahead and go big screen for a minute. And let's open up a photo. Now, the photo that I'm going to open is that uh, cougar photo, that mountain lion uh, that uh, I used to create that laser engraving uh, to create. Where's my mouse at to create this laser engraving here? Uh, this is the photo uh, that I started with. And now this it says here, it's going to import a color file. Uh, it's got an Adobe RGB color file or GIMP. And I'm just going to put uh, um, uh, convert to let it convert to the GIMP stuff um, rather than the Adobe. Uh, and... Let it convert and then it'll open up. Let's get back to the full screen here. Now, the um, once it's opened up, give it a second. It's actually pretty fast, but uh, because my resolution is so big, it's slow tonight. So how are y'all doing? Who else is in here? Hey, Kevin Wilkerson. And uh, what's uh, Steven say? Hi from Australia. Hey, man. Welcome, Stephen. Uh, currently working on a project on Thursday Island in the Torres Strait. Very cool. Thanks for taking time out, Stephen, to join us from the land down under. Uh, and uh, also there was, uh, um, let's see here. Who was it that said, where is he at? Where is he at? Uh Wade Nash from SoCal, South Cal, wait, SoCal, uh, uh, Southern California. Thank you very much. I almost got it right there. And then Ohio. Uh, who was it? This was from Ohio. Now I can't find. Oh, yeah. Tim Guba. Welcome, Tim. All right. Why is it my photo opening? Come on, Gimp. Don't don't hold me down. Oh, it would help if I uh, actually. Um, finished uh, processing this. Oh, did I just freeze up my GIMP? Okay, that will happen from time to time when you have a junk computer. <laughs> my computer is slowly killing me uh, deep inside. Um, let's uh, get back here to uh, where I look normal. There we go. Okay. We interrupt this broadcast for some technical dish. <laughs> uh, standby. Um, I should have just said keep and not convert. Let me um, let me redo this. Oh, yep. Yeah. Gip is very stable. Uh, it works very well, but. Tonight, it's it's going to be one of those nights for me, um, which is going to be fun. Hey, Tippy Looter. How you doing, bud? All right, so let's get GIMP open up. And uh, this is terrible advertisement for GIMP because it's running. It's freezing up and everything, and it has nothing to do with GIMP. It's, it's my computer, guys and girls. It's uh, killing me softly. Killing me softly. <laughs> Uh, all right. Yep. Yeah. So let's go back in here and, uh, let's get GIMP open back up. All right. One more time. Let's go ahead and I'm going to open up, uh, the image and, um, I'm going to keep the RGB values just like that. Okay. Instead of converting now. So we got the photo in. All right, that was step number one. 
step number two is we got to size it down uh, to fit our piece, our project and everything. So I'm going to go to image and scale the image. Uh, now, no matter what, what you want is you want your X and Y resolution to be 600. Uh, here, when you're scaling the image, as well as uh, when you're using the, the big daddy Gimpin, uh, 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 you know, plugin. So uh, I want my resolution to be 600 by 600. And then here I can change my picture to whatever size that I want. Now, my tile is four inches by four inches, uh, but I'm going to go three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths um, so that uh, I'm not running all the way off the edge uh, because I'm going to end up clearing out this gray background here and making it white just so I uh, have the uh, laser just carving on here. So uh, three and seven eighths. I don't know why I did that. 3.875. Now I, I typed in exactly what I said. Three and seven eight. All right, eight seven five. Three point eight seven five. And I'm gonna click scale. Okay. Woo! Look at that. All right. Now I'm gonna go to my magnifying glass and I'm gonna hold my control key down and I'm gonna bring that back down so we can see it all. Okay. So now I've got this scaled down uh, to size to where it's going to fit on my tile. I don't have to do anything more than that. But this background uh, has kind of a grayscale background. And that's fine if I wanted to go ahead and laser that whole thing with that shading and stuff on, you know, I could laser that in. But that's just a lot of extra work when I want just my focal point to be uh, the mountain line, right? The cougar. And so I want to do a little bit of cleaning up on the background and all, and also I want to bring out some of the edges and the contrast a little bit better. It's a little bit dull right now. So under the colors menu, uh, I'm going to come down here to my brightness and contrast, and I'm also going to use my exposure. Uh, uh, let's start off with the exposure first. And um, I want to kind of bring up my black level a bit. Uh, and I want to kind of a uh, little bit, not much. I don't want to, I don't want to wash it out completely, but I want to bring up my exposure just a little bit. Uh, I want to really kind of bring out those black tones some and then change my exposure. And I'm not going to do a whole lot of manipulation on that. Uh, just that. And, and guys and girls, I am not a photo guy. I do not know anything about, you know, photo editing To I, I know a lot, a little, a little, a lot, but I'm not an expert on it, right? There's all, there's all kinds of videos out there teaching you how to, uh, you know, process photos and stuff. But uh, this is what I'm doing. Uh, now, I'm going to go into my brightness and contrast now, and uh, I'm going to increase the brightness uh, slightly, not much. And the contrast, I want to bring that out a little bit more too. Not a whole lot, just some, okay, uh, to get this photo ready. And what I'm trying to do is I'm doing my best to uh, get the grayscale background uh, as minimal as I want. Hold your control key to zoom back out. Ooh, that was too much. Um, I want to get it back to white as much as possible, kind of a true white. Because now I need to come in and uh, I need to do some uh, cleanup of the background and all. And so I'm going to use my paint bucket. I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to use the white on my paint bucket. And in these gray areas and everything, I'm going to just literally wash out um, some of these areas and make them white. I'm just clicking that white in these different uh, shades and colors. Uh, and uh, up here as well. And what that will uh, do for me is now that I've gotten a majority of it white, uh, I only have a little bit of cleanup that I need to do. Okay. Uh, so uh, let's zoom back out. And uh, I'm going to use my eraser, my background eraser tool and uh, with the background eraser tool, I want to make sure that uh, black is uh, at the white is at the bottom because I want to bring it white. And uh, let's get my tool sized up. 
Um, here, let's do this. Let me zoom out a little bit more. Not that much. Uh, let's go back to there. That's good. All right, let's get my background eraser tool in here. And um, I want to uh, change my tool size. My tool size. Uh, kind of increase that a bit. And I'm literally just going to go in here. And uh, let's see here. Increase my spacing. Oh, Lord, have mercy on you. Edit this brush. Uh, the hardness is good. The radius. It's not going to let me change that brush that much. Yeah, it's not going to let me change the brush. But that's okay. We don't need to change it too much. All right. We'll just go in here and we'll deal with it. And the reason why my brush is so small is because my resolution is so big on my screen. If I had it reversed the other way, then uh, it would be a much bigger brush. And I'm sure there's a way. And I don't know GIMP, guys. I, I just know what I need to do in GIMP to get the photo the way I want. Right? Again, I'm not a photo editor. Um, there's probably a cool button somewhere that uh, will... Uh, you know, uh, change the brush dramatically, right? Uh, change the size. There's probably a button for that. There's probably something, but that's okay. All I'm doing is all these little specks and dots. Uh, I'm just going through and removing them because I don't want my laser burning those specks and dots in. So if I come back over here and let's... Ooh, Let's uh, zoom out a little bit. Not that much. Lord have mercy there, boy. Make it a little bit bigger. I can see the, uh, the trash and stuff that I need to clean up. And so I can come in here and clean that up much better. I can get in there and really just uh, get rid of those specks and stuff. So I'm going to just kind of go down the photo. And when I find these specs, now this is the cougar over here. I don't want to change that. Um, so I want to go in here and uh, clean these areas up. Move down a little bit more until I see more trash. And this side looks good. Okay, so now I'm going to move over and right here, I'm going to start cleaning this up. A little bit of speckle there. Move over a little bit more. That's the ear. I don't want to erase that. And we'll clean this up, up at the top. All this trash right here. Just going to erase all that. And as I zoom out, if I go back to zoom out here uh, a little bit, I can see, you know, where the ear is and where I need to uh, clean up uh, and stuff. So I'm going to just kind of lightly trace along that ear and clean up those edges a bit. I don't want to get too close, but, uh, you know, somewhere in there. Uh, let's come down. And this side looks pretty clean. If I inspect it. Yep. So that side looks clean. Across the top looks clean. And down here looks clean. Oh, there's a little speck right there. Nope. Sorry. That's on my screen. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's uh, zoom back in here. And now I've got a uh, fairly clean background, white background and all. 
And uh, that's all the photo manipulation I want to do on this. Okay. Uh, hey, Steve Civil, how you doing? Uh, Steve, I haven't emailed you those items yet. I'll email them to you after class. Um, so I've done all the photo manipulation that I want to do on this image. Okay. I've done all the background cleanup and all, and it wasn't necessary. It really wasn't, but I didn't want my laser engraving that. I want that white tile. Uh, you know, I want to still have uh, the white tile. And then I just want the, the mountain line to be the focal point. Okay. So I didn't want to do the, the uh, shading and everything around here to kind of, you know, burn that in. Uh, that's just not what I want it. Right. So now that I've got it uh, cleaned up and everything, a little washed out on the chin, but I will fix that in Vetric. Uh, right now I'm going to go to the big daddy Gimpin. Okay plug in and uh, turn that on or open that up. Now, this is the Norton method. We are laser engraving a grayscale image on white tile. Okay. So uh, in the Big Daddy Gimpin plugin, uh, it's designed to invert the image so that it's laser engraving on a black painted tile, a white tile painted black, should I say. So what we want to do is... Um, uh, when I process this, the next step is I want to invert the colors on it. Okay. But when I'm doing the Hulk, uh, or, you know, when I, when I, when I, when I did the Hulk, you know, carving on the, the white tile painted black, uh, you don't invert the, the image uh, after, after you run the plugin, you save it and it's done. But to carve on the white tile, uh, we got to invert it and you'll see that here in two shakes of a stick. So I'm going to select tile here. I want my DPI to be 600, my max image uh, to be 100 millimeters and 100 millimeters. Uh, that's all fine. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK to process this image. Hey, Mike Perry, good. How, how are you doing from Troy, Missouri? All right, cool beans. So the image has been processed. Now, if I were laser engraving this on a black tile uh, with some kind of uh, colored background, you know, I could hell, I could have a tan color background uh, or or what have you. Um, then I would, you know, I'd leave it like this. But we are carving it on a painted white tile, a white tile. So I need to come up to my colors here, and I need to invert the colors. Okay. So now this image is ready. Uh, and if we look all the dithering and everything, all the black spots, that's where the laser is going to fire. All the white spots is where it's not going to fire, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and uh, this image is processed and ready to go. Okay. Um, so all I have to do from here is go to file, save, or export as, let's export, export as, not save as, export as. And uh, I'm going to export it. Let it get my window ready. <clears throat> I'm going to export it as, I'll call it Cougar. Cougar laser. Uh, four by four and it's a JPEG image, right? So I'll go ahead and, uh, export that. And in the export, uh, window, I want to make sure that the quality is at a hundred percent. So I want to turn that up to a hundred percent and I'm going to go ahead and click export, leave all the defaults the way they are. Okay. Done. Right. Done and done. Now, so I don't have to ever do this image again. I am going to go ahead and save the image. Uh, and I'm going to save this as, um, Cougar, uh, I M G processed. Right. I'm just going to save that. 
Okay. That way, um, yeah, it's done. All right. So now we're done with GIMP as far as that process goes. So we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, close out of this. And we're going to go into our Vetric. On the Vetric, I'm going to create a new file. My file size is going to be uh, three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths by a quarter of an inch, uh, the size of my tile. I'm going to zero out on the material surface and I'm going to uh, start in the bottom left corner. Okay. Now, let's come back here. Let's talk about a couple of things. Let's talk about paints. Now, I went out to Lowe's yesterday and I bought the ceramic tiles, 15 cents each. So I bought 12 of them, uh, four inch by four inch. You can get whatever size tile you want, right? Uh, you know, it's not just for four inch, but I went, I went and bought 12 of these at 15 cents a pop, right? Uh, I bought a, uh, variety of paints. Uh, some of the paints that Garrett recommended, uh, what he was using in his video, uh, and, uh, some not right. So, uh, the first thing was like when he did the Hulk, uh, he did, he painted the white tile with, uh, this gloss. You can't read it because of the green screen, but it's jungle green. Uh, and it was the Krylon Fusion all-in-one gloss jungle, Ooh. Tarzan jungle green, right? So I bought a can of that because I wanted to do the Hulk just to compare his results and my results to see what adjustments I would need to make, right? That's what a tutorial video is. You know, you have something that gives you a guideline and then from there you adjust to get the results that you want, right? All right. Uh, the second thing was the black. So um, at Lowe's, they had uh, Krylon black and they had, you know, uh, you know, gloss black. It's gloss black, right? But uh, Garrett was using this two times ultra cover uh, high gloss uh, uh, in his video. So I thought, you know what? So I'm comparing apples to apples. I want to get the, you know, the same paints that he has. So I ended up having to go to Walmart because uh, this is the American Accents brand of the Rust-Oleum American Accents uh, two-by cover, and it's the uh, high gloss black, right? Uh, I also, for the Norton method, I also went ahead and bought the gloss white, okay? The same Rust-Oleum American Accents uh, paint and primer, two-by ultra cover, okay? So I bought that. And then I also, because I wanted to do Spider-Man, uh, I bought some blue and I bought some red, and I, I bought this in that fusion all in one. Uh, and this one happened to be called uh, Gloss Red Pepper. I just thought that that might be a good bright color when I laser engrave Spider-Man. I want to see how well that does with, you know, the spider suit and all that because it's red and black and blue and all that stuff. So I want to I want to experiment. Right. This is, uh, you know, just something to learn. Um, so uh, I also uh, picked up a can of clear coat, uh, just simple. I'm just using lacquer clear gloss, right? Minwax lacquer clear gloss, because, uh, you know, after this is laser engraved, you're going to clear coat it, right? Clear coat it. Okay. So, uh, I have the paint and I've got the tiles, right? Now, when it comes to the Norton method, when you're just laser engraving on the white tile, uh, you're going to use the white gloss, white gloss and uh, just a nice, good uh, light spray cover. Um, I did, I want to call it two coats because I went uh, nice back and forth at a nice speed, nice overlapping, uh, you know, layers. And then I went back in the same direction, right? So uh, technically two coats, right? Instead of one. So I did two coats. Okay. Let that sit overnight. It kind of dries in two hours, but I let it sit overnight. I painted them last night, laser and them this morning. By the way, the Cougar, uh, as far as time-wise, because I know Ronnie Probert's watching tonight, and he always asks, what's the time to carve? Uh, that took 45 minutes to laser and 45 minutes with my six-watt laser. Um, the uh, Hulk, 
which I didn't get the good result. I didn't, and you can't see the green because of my green screen. Uh, we're actually looking through the tile. It's an invisible tile. Um, but uh, I didn't get that brilliant result that Garrett got in his video. Uh, but still, it was an hour and 29 minutes to laser engrave that. I went finer lines. You'll see when we get into the Vetric here and all. Uh, but I should have went with a little bit more power setting on the laser and possibly a little bit slower to really get through that black and then the green. But let's talk about the white tiles first. So I sprayed two coats, nice, nice, even layer coats and everything. But before I sprayed them, before I painted the tiles, I wiped them down really well with lacquer thinner. Because uh, the tiles have, you know, they've got fingerprint grease and all kinds of stuff on it from manufacturing, but they also have a residue on them and all. So the first thing I did is I took a cloth and some acid, uh, lacquer thinner, lacquer thinner. You can use acetone too, but lacquer thinner. And I really wiped them down and polished that white tile very cleanly so that the paint sticks to it very well. So I wiped it down with uh, lacquer thinner, let it sit for a minute, and then I took a dry rag and just kind of dried it off and buffed it off. Then I sprayed the white paint. You want to do that for all your tiles. You want to clean them very thoroughly with lacquer thinner or acetone. I like the lacquer thinner just like Garrett. Uh, I'm a big fan of lacquer thinner when it comes to cleaning. Um, so uh, clean it very well. Take your time with that and everything so that way you get good adhesion with the paint. Uh, the paint dried very well. Now if we look at this very closely you're going to see a small little defect. I don't know how well that'll focus in with my green screen. Are you going to focus? There it is. There's a small little defect there. When you're painting at night, shut your shop doors because those little bugs that fly in to see the lights, they like to land in wet paint for some reason. I don't know why, but they do. They like to land in wet paint. So if I, when I laser engrave this one, I'm actually going to laser engrave it this way. So the darker areas are down at the bottom and you won't see that defect, right? But I have 12 of these tiles to play with, but yeah, Man, nice, good, even paint job. It was all shiny. And then all of a sudden, uh, I come back a few seconds later and there's a little gnat bug sitting right in it doing the backstroke. And I thought, I'm going to kill you. So then I had to pick them out of there. And that messed up the paint. Uh, and I didn't want to add more paint. I wanted just the two coats. So I let it sit. Now, I went ahead and um, with the jungle green and the black, uh, I sprayed on two coats of the jungle green. Uh, nice overlapping coats and everything. You want to start off the tile in nice overlapping coats uh, and everything. And I did two coats of the jungle green and I let that tile sit for two hours. I timed it two hours, just like Garrett said, I wanted to follow everything, um, uh, you know, apples to apples, right? I wanted to compare the results and all. Uh, once the two hours was up, I took the gloss black paint and uh, I laid on, uh, a coat and a half, we'll call it, because uh, I just kind of, you know, nice uh, full coat and then came back. Uh, good distance away, getting a nice even stream, uh, good steady pace so that it covered the, you know, the tile uh, well, right? Uh, and then those tiles, I did three of them. Uh, I did three uh, black tiles. One of them I did my test laser engrave on. Uh, I let them sit overnight with the white tiles, okay? So uh, two coats, if you're doing like an undercoat, like that jungle green with that black, uh, two coats, let it sit for two hours and then put your coat, a nice even coat or coat and a half or two coats of your black. Don't go real heavy with the black because we want the laser to be able to burn through it uh, and, all, and get down to that green and, um, and all and everything. We want that green to really pop so you don't have to you know paint a whole lot. When it comes to the white tiles and the white gloss, uh, two nice coats uh, and let that sit overnight and uh, your tiles are prepped and ready to go. Okay. That brings us now uh, while all that's happening. Yes. Bugs love epoxy Rodney. That's for sure. And uh, it happens during the day too. <laughs> Crystal says, um, but uh, you know, uh, in the process of uh, while those uh, tiles were painting and everything or, or, or drying, not painting, I was painting the tiles. Uh, they were drying. Uh, while they were drying and all, I came back and started, you know, finishing, you know, getting the tool pass and everything ready. So uh, I've got the job set up in Vetric. And so I'm going to go ahead and import the bitmap. And um, uh, in that uh, bitmap, 
I'm going to uh, come in here to my Cougar Laser 4x4 uh, image here. And I'm going to click open. All right. And now <clears throat> let's pause for a second. I could have just imported that lion or that cougar image straight into Vetric, right? Vetric has some uh, tools for uh, processing an image. Not, not a whole lot, but there's some to adjust the contrast, the brightness, and the gamma. Uh, we can invert it. We can grayscale an image, and we can do things like that. But, uh, and then also, you know, when we come over with the laser module, uh, we can dither the image so it gets that 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 pointed dither uh, for when that laser turns on and off. We could have done that. I could have done it in Vetric. I don't know how well the results would have been, but it probably would have been fairly well, right? I'm going to test that theory also. Right now, I'm just following Garrett's steps uh, because I really like how quick and easy that was. Uh, and, um, you know, it was a surefire thing. I didn't have to do hardly anything with that. Um so with the image imported in, the only thing I did with the uh, the Cougar image in Vetric is I did open the picture editor. And I did play around a bit with the gamma uh, to really uh, bring out the darks. Um, you know, if I come in here, you know, I can lighten them up or, you know, bring them out a little bit more. I wanted them to pop a little bit more. Uh, so I did adjust the gamma a bit, but I did not mess with the brightness. So I left that at its default uh, in the contrast. I didn't change the contrast at all either, right? Uh, you know, so I left that where it was, but I did adjust the gamma. Uh, so at the original image coming in where it is right now, I did slide that uh, gamma bar back uh, slightly to uh, just get the blacks to pop just a little bit more, okay? Uh, to really get those blacks to stand out. And let's see if we can see uh, the difference in everything. If you can see that subtle change in these blacks uh, when we uh, pull that back, you can see them just kind of stiffen up a little bit, you know, and get a little bit more black. So I did do that in the Vetric software, okay? That was the only thing that I, uh, that's the only, that's the only manipulation I did to this photo in the Vetric software. So we click apply and um, here, I'm going to undo that, edit. Okay. It didn't apply. Hold on a second. Did my mouse move on me? And click apply. Why is my camera moving back? Oh, it probably already did it, but it's not letting me. It's not undoing it. Let me see here. Undo edit picture. So it did do it. So um, it did it twice. So let's get back to uh, let's do that again because I just undid it twice. Uh, I didn't realize that uh, the when that bar moved back to the middle, it threw me off there. I was like, wait a minute. What? because I wasn't paying attention. All right, so on my image, let's pull this back and click apply and close. Okay, so that's all I did uh, with regards to that. Now we're gonna go over and create the tool path and I am in the laser module, the picture laser module. Okay, and uh, All right, hold on a second now. Are you guys talking to yourself or did I do I need to pause something? Uh, Michael said, when can he in pause? When can he, when can he unpause? <laughs> when can he unpause? Oh, okay, I got you. I uh, I thought I I thought I had to I thought I had to do something. Um anyhow, uh so back into the you know, once I did the image edit um in the Vetric here, this tool here. Uh, once I change that gamma, which I'm not going to do it again, but once I change that gamma and just 
punched up the uh, the blacks a little bit more. Uh, now it was time to create the toolpath. And so the laser picture. Um, now on this one, when we are doing, we want our laser power to be high power. When we're doing black and we're just burning through that top layer of black to the under layer, in this case, that jungle green, we want the laser to be a low power, uh, you know, eight to 10% uh, and, and, and things in, in, in that range. But when we're doing the white tile laser engraving, we want this to be a high power. So I'm going 85% uh, power on this. Uh, now the move speed, how fast we're moving um, with uh, Garrett and his video, uh, he was going 1200 millimeters uh, per inch. And uh, that translates to 48 inches per minute. Uh, uh, let me say that again. I just screwed up. 1,200 millimeters a minute is what his setting is. And that translates roughly to 48 inches per minute. It's like 47 and some change. So 48 is good for me. Uh, so that's what I set it at um, and to do this, uh, to do this uh, laser engraving. And um, uh, I did a raster, no need to dither because the image has already been processed and dithered already. You can see those dots and everything uh, and everything. So it's already been processed and dithered by the, the, the GIMP software. So no need to dither, just a raster cut. Now line spacing. Uh, when I did uh, my line, uh, my not lion, my uh, cougar here, the mountain lion, uh, my line spacing was oh, 0.043. Okay, that's what I did my line spacing at. Now, when I did the Incredible Hulk, I brought that down. I wanted a much, much tighter line. Uh, so I brought that down to uh, 0.18, uh, 115 actually, 0 0.0015, 0015. Uh, so um, I wanted a much denser line pattern on it. Uh, with the mountain line that 0.0043 uh, gave me a good uh, result. The line spacing and everything uh, worked out uh, very well. Uh, and uh, the clarity of that on that tile is just in my, in my opinion, it's phenomenal. I mean, it's just really, really good. The detail that came out of that. And so I've got a cool image that I want to work on here in just a second and everything uh, and uh, and stuff. Uh, but that turned out really well for me. Uh, I was very happy with that. So I was happy with those settings. OK, I was the 85 worked out great. 85 percent power worked out great. Uh, the move speed was perfect. Uh, it was a perfect pace. Uh, and uh, that raster with that 0043 line spacing was good. Now, the line angle was zero, okay? Uh, so my line angle was zero. I went back and forth like a printer, okay? Went back and forth like a printer, and uh, that was perfect. So once, that, uh, once those settings were in and they were calculated, within the Vetric software, um, I can preview uh, the cut. Now, the toolpath looks weird here, guys, uh, like this blue and everything over here. This is just the movement of the laser. It's not where it's actually burning. So I'm going to kind of recommend, I'm going to say that just ignore this, uh, this blue and all. That's just kind of the movement of the laser uh, and everything. Uh, it really has no bearing on anything. And I don't know what that, why it shows it that way, but that's the way it shows it. OK, but um, the, uh, you know, on the uh, preview, we'll let that run out. But uh, once that, you know, once I previewed it, which I really didn't need to, I could have just saved the toolpath that I calculated and go out to my controller program and run it. Um, but uh, I like to, you know, uh, preview things. And, um, and and see what they look like. Uh, and let me turn my toolpath quality down some. And let's preview that toolpath again. 
let that go through and preview. While that's previewing, I want to take you over to the CNC machine uh, and show you the uh, the, en the engraving, what it looked like when it was engraving. Now, we're not physically going to go. We're going to virtually go over to the CNC machine. Uh, so I'm going to, um, while that's uh, previewing, I'm going to go to my documents. And I'm going to come down here to... My video. I can't remember what I named my video. Hold on. I think I named it. Uh, what the hell did I name my video? <laughs> Hold on a second. Um, what did I name my video? Uh, Cougar, Mountain Lion, Tiger. I had it pulled up here. Uh, bear with me a second. Uh, what the heck did I name that video for class? Let's go back to the downloads and see if I dropped, if I was smart enough to throw it in my downloads. Uh, laser tile, lasering tile, lasering tile, MP4. That's the 53 minute video. This, I think this is the video here. We'll know in two seconds. No, backup file. Okay. Wrong one. Okay, so when I process my videos, bear with me. This is so stupid of me. Uh, they go into documents. And they fall in my documents. And... Kemp image process, DWC profile, game, game, game. Gates, how to laser engrave, laser tile one. How stupid of me to name it that. Okay, but that's the video, laser tile one. So let's open that up. Lord have mercy. Uh, and uh, let's take just uh, as we uh, will pause this a brief second. And uh, we'll make that bigger while I'm sitting over here. Uh, but first of all, uh, real quick, before we watch that video, uh, let's just take a look at uh, that uh, lasered result uh, and everything. And of course, if I came in here and made this a solid color, uh, white, you know, that would kind of be a representation of what the, you know, the tile would look like. And it's just a visual representation, right? But uh, as that was laser engraving, um, as it was going through and laser engraving, man, my, I was just, I was, I was lighting up with joy because it's literally laser engraving, uh, not only just through the paint, but it's in the tile too. I can, I can fill it in the tile. Uh, and uh, when I clear coat that, I mean, you know, that that's in the tile. So, the 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 Hulk, the Incredible Hulk. Now that's in the paint. It's gone through the black paint in, in to to reveal the green paint, which we can't see, of course. Um, but uh, and it's clear coated. I've clear coated it and everything afterwards. But I needed to go a little bit stronger power. We're going to talk about the power setting for the Hulk and what I what I would change here in a second. But um, or what what the changes are with regards to this, but uh, I should have went a little bit more power or a little bit slower speed than the 1200 uh, millimeters a minute. Uh, you know, I should have, instead of 48 inches per minute, uh, let's say maybe bring it down to 40 inches a minute or so. And maybe instead of uh, the 9% that I was at, um, uh, bring it up to 10 or 11% just to break through because I was a little heavy handed on the black paint 
when I painted it. Uh, so it didn't get that brand color. Now I could have, if I had, if time permitting before class and all, I probably could have just uh, re-ran this, you know, re-ran it a second time to break through a little bit more, to get a little bit more out of there. But where I failed was I didn't adjust the images. I just took it right from the Big Daddy Gimpin. Uh, and I didn't adjust any of the brightness or contrast. I didn't make the blacks really pop. They were more of a gray scale than blacks. And I want that laser firing in that black. I want it really firing in that black area and all, and not just lower power. Cause as that shading, that gray scale, uh, the voltage or the power, uh, is going to go from 85% down to zero. It's going to cycle between those two. And in the dark black areas of that image, um, that's going to be the highest power. And then the gray scale kind of, uh, you know, uh, parts of it, uh, the grayer shades, the lighter blacks, that's when that power is going to reduce, um, and stuff. And I said 85% to zero, I meant zero to 10%, uh, when we're talking about the Hulk, but we're going to talk about that in just a second. But I was really pleased, uh, as it is, you, you can see the carving process here. Um, now this is sped up. Uh, this was a, uh, 45 minute video sped up to two minutes. So that process and everything, uh, no, what you literally, what you see right now, Harvey, Harvey asked the question, did it create a lot of smoke when you etched the tile? Uh, literally this is what you see. So you, you would be able to, and let me, uh, let me back that up. Uh, let me back that up. Uh, there was absolutely no smoke coming off of that at all. Okay. Um, and Robert Costa says, do you have to paint the tile every time? Can you engrave straight on the tile? No, you can't. You have to paint the white tile with gloss white paint. Uh, that will help it uh, burn into the tile. So don't go on the straight tile because it's, it's going to be, uh, it's, it's not going to work. This process will not work. You need to paint your tile white uh, and uh, prep the tile, paint it, you know, clean it with acetone, paint it white, let it sit. It's good and solid and uh, it'll really burn that in there and everything. Don't do it just on a plain tile. Now you could probably go over, like I said, um, Nikki Norton, that's called the Nikki Norton method. This uh, process we did with the Cougar here. Um, you could probably look up Nicky Norton. He's a, he's kind of a, uh, you know, an authority on laser engraving on white tiles. And you could see if he has other methods and all that work for low voltage uh, lasers uh, or low wattage lasers, uh, such as four to six to 10 watts and stuff. Uh, and not necessarily the higher wattage lasers uh, like your 60 and 90 watt and things like that. So, uh, Robert, uh, paint the tile. It doesn't take very long. Uh, just nice, even coats, uh, and let it sit, let it harden up and all that good stuff. And then go, go to town. Uh, so that, uh, but as far as the smoke, Harvey, uh, no, this is literally what you see is here. Now you could smell it. I could smell it. I could smell the, the, the burning, uh, and everything, but there was, there was absolutely no smoke in the shop or anything like that. So it was pretty cool. And man, as this image started revealing itself as that process, uh, uh, you know, uh, as it started to just really present itself when it got to the eyes and I could really see the detail in the eyes, that's when I was getting excited. Uh, and I was excited all to begin with because Hey, it's, it's a pretty cool thing to do. Right. So I was very happy with, uh, the results and, and everything. And uh, this picture is blown out, uh, but uh, uh, that's the, the finished image, but it's really blown out. Uh, I don't know. Uh, my photo editing skills are not the greatest at all. Uh, so I was really happy with that result. Um, now let's talk about the uh, in Incredible Hulk for a minute. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, save this. As... Uh, Cougar uh, V Carve Pro, so I know it is because I have it in Aspire. Also, uh, I'm gonna save that. Let that save, and then I'm 
All right, Steve Martin or Stephen Maine, not Martin. <laughs> Work always comes first, my man. So uh, definitely check it out later for sure. Um, what is the wattage on the one you're using? It's a six watt. Our digital laser, our uh, our our digital laser engraver that attaches to the digital wood carver uh, DWC 2440 model units or our DWC 1824 model units is a six watt engraving laser. Uh, our digital six watt engraving laser. So it was just six watts, um, and um, uh, super happy with it. All right. So now that that's saved, let's go ahead and close this and create a new file. And uh, on this one, I'm going to keep the parameters the same, three and eight, uh, seven eighths by three and seven eighths. And I'm going to import an image. And uh, on this image, uh, I'm going to import where'd my hole go? Ignore the middle finger right there. Uh, <laughs> that was a model someone asked me to make. Uh, anyhow, uh, let's see here. Where's my Where's my Hulk? All right, that's okay. Uh, we'll quickly uh, process the Hulk. So in real time, uh, we're going to go ahead and go file open. I'm going to grab uh, from my downloads. And this is the same Hulk image that Garrett used in his video. And guys, I recommend uh, 3D Print Farm. I recommend you go check out his videos uh, because uh, they're great. Uh, you know, uh, he does a good job and um, and everything. I'm just kind of going a little bit more into detail uh, and, and everything. Uh, so, yeah, but definitely check it out because, uh, you know, that's where I you know, took the, uh, the inspiration and the idea from all the methods and, 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 and the processes and everything. Uh, and then of course, using the, uh, Norton method and then using, uh, Sean Murray's, uh, big daddy Gimpin, uh, processor, all these guys, you know, played a role and let me get down to my H's, uh, Oh, JPEG. All right, so let's open up the Hulk. Okay, whoa, big old mean nasty Hulk. All right, first thing I'm going to do is go to image, scale image, change my resolution to 600 by 600, change my image to inches to 3.78 by 3.78, 3 and 7 eighths, sorry, 875 uh, by 3.875, okay? Okay. He's about to get big and nasty. I'm going to go into my scale here and hold down my control key and bring him back out. I'm going to open up the Big Daddy Gimpin uh, processor here, uh, the plug-in. And I'm going to choose tile 600, leave that 100 by 100 and click OK. OK. And... Uh, this is processed and ready to go. And then, you know, from here, I would go uh, export as. Let it uh, open that. No inverting because we're carving on black painted, uh, a white tile painted black with undercoatings and everything. So no invert. I didn't have to invert the colors that time. Uh, and uh, we'll um, call this Hulk laser four by four JPEG and export it out. And again, in the export window, when it pops up here, I want it at 100% quality, 100% quality and click export. Okay, so that's done. 
But now, remember, I said I didn't quite get the uh, the image results uh, that I wanted. You know, I didn't get quite that bright, brilliant green that uh, Garrett got, right? Uh, and so looking at this, uh, my, my, uh, my blacks aren't really, you know, I've got different shades of grayscale and they're not really black and brilliant and stuff. So that lasers, you know, uh, going from, I'm only using 10% power, right? Just enough to break through that black layer of paint. So, um, I want it to ride at that 10% more so than cycle from zero to 10. I want it to ride at that 10%, you know, all the way through. Now in Vetric, I could have my maximum power at 10% and my minimum power at 10%. So it doesn't cycle. It stays at 10% all the way through. And that would help dramatically, right? That would help uh, maintain. But I want to, let me zoom back out here. I want to think that I could do some photo editing in here uh, just to adjust some of the colors and, and things a little bit more uh, and, and stuff. Or maybe before I even process the image, you know, before I even process the image through the uh, big dad, or da I keep saying big daddy. <laughs> I just realized that. The big gimpin plugin. I keep calling it the big daddy plugin the whole time I've been doing that. They just realized what I'm saying. The big gimpin plugin. Before I process it through there, maybe I can do some photo editing in here. Um and uh, uh get those brilliant colors in so that when it processes, get those blacks really black, get those darks really dark. That way, when it processes, it might process a little differently. Now, before I do that, let's answer a quick question here. Uh, should you let a laser cool down after a period of time or is it just, uh, or is that just the low cost lasers? Um, my laser, I ran it, I ran that Cougar uh, for that 45 minutes. As soon as it was done, literally just fast enough time for me to take one tile off, put the black tile on, uh, get the black tile aligned and load the toolpath and hit start. I will turn right around and laser engrave that hour and 20 minutes and all. Um, I could have probably kept going. As far as letting it cool down, our laser has a fan built on it. So it's constantly cooling. Uh, it's constantly cooling while it's, while it's going. Uh, I've run my laser, you know, eight, 10 hour jobs at a time, uh, you know, where the, the actual car, the laser engraving time was eight to 10 hours uh, without, issue, sorry, hiccups, um, without issue and stuff. So should you let the laser cool down? Maybe, but with my fan constantly running, the laser constantly running on that fan, uh, as it's engraving, it's constantly cooling. So I, I can let it run some long times. I don't know if that helped answer your question, Ronnie. It just depends on the laser itself. If your laser has a good, strong fan uh, on it and it's keeping it cool, great. If not, then you may want to let it rest for a bit, right? Paint some other tiles and get them prepped, you know, or, or what have you uh, and stuff. But going back to uh, here real quick, let me get a sip of Sprite. Could I have, could I have manipulated the image uh, some to really kind of get it to pop a little bit uh, before I processed it? Now, Garrett, uh, I didn't see what he did beforehand, but he imported the image processed it, carved it, right? And he got some great results. Now, did he process the image at all before that as far as bringing out the lights and darks a little bit more? Uh, I don't know. It didn't show in the video if he did or not. Uh, it just showed him open, run it through the big uh, the, the big gimping uh, uh, plugin and go. Well, I'm going to see if I can manipulate this image a little bit uh, to bring out uh, the areas uh, that I want to laser engrave. And my green is the areas that I want to laser engrave. Um, you know, uh, the black's going to end up being the whites and all. But where that green is, I want it to expose that green from underneath that black layer. So I really want them to, uh, you know, I want my greens to uh, kind of pop. 
Uh, and so I don't want to go that direction. I don't want to go that direction. Exposure is not going to be uh, the best option for me. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. Let's look at our other color options here. Um, or I think I was in brightness and contrast. Uh, brightness and contrast isn't going to be the option for me. So let's look at our black levels and let's see if, um, you know, I can process them a little bit. Let's change the exposure and bring out that green some. That really bright green kind of bring out those highlights and things uh the whiteness in the teeth and around the nose those hot spots and stuff all that's good for me uh and everything uh let's move this window out of the way um and let's um you know here in these areas here you know the brighter the better for me uh you know so i'm gonna kind of pop them out some really get that kind of exposed uh, and, uh, click okay. And now I'm going to run and on the eyes, I'm not really seeing the detail in the eyes. They're kind of dark. So let me see here. Let me come back here. The eyes are, you know, somewhat visible in this image. Uh, let's zoom in. You know, the eyes are somewhat visible, but you know, they're really shadowed out, uh, by the eyebrows and the furrows of the eyebrows and all. So here, uh, when I'm changing my exposure, I'm not really bringing out the eyes that much. And I don't even know if I can. Um, let's see if I can change my curves a little bit. I don't want to blow it out too much. And so I can get a little bit of a glimpse in the eye, but I'm not really going to, this one's a bloodshot. Uh, I'm not really going to be able to bring that out too much. Um, so, uh, you know, but I really want to, you know, pop as much as that of that green as I can uh, that way, when I process this through the uh, the Gimpin plugin, the big Gimpin plugin and everything, um, hopefully uh, the result again, tile 600 DPI, that's important, 600 DPI. Uh, we're going to click OK. And let that process. OK. And now, I, now I'm getting into the territory that I like because all the black, all that black is what's going to be lasering away. Uh, the whites where the laser is not going to be firing and everything. So I'm getting a little bit more into the realm uh, that would, uh, those teeth are really brought out. And if we look once again, if we kind of go big here, um, let me see. I got to bear with me a second. I got to turn my green screen off so we can uh see that so in here uh you can still see some of the black in the uh the teeth right uh where they really and you know you can still see some of the black areas around the the nose and all uh where it just didn't quite it wasn't strong enough to punch through that black to bring out that green that jungle green and that jungle green uh ladies and gentlemen um just to give you an idea That doesn't look good on pink, but uh, it's actually much brighter than that. But it's it's a really bright, uh, it's kind of dull on this, but it's a really bright green. I mean, it should pop like my green screen right here, right? That's what it should look like. Um, well, basically about that color right there, which if we compare that, pretty close. Okay, so... Now that I sprayed that paint, uh, which was probably not the smartest thing to do, especially around my computer. But anyway, uh, let's get back to uh, here. So now, but now I've got those blacks are popping and those whites are popping, right? So uh, I'm actually going to export this one out and overwrite the other one.
All right, and let's uh, get down to my Hulk. Oops. Hulk laser 4x4. Four four. I'm going to click export and replace. Okay. Uh, again, 100% quality there and export. Okay. All right. Now, coming back out of here, going back into Vetric. Now, this one uh, is going to be different. Uh, this one is uh, our power, our, our laser power is going to be less. We're going to be bringing the power down. Uh, so, um, coming back into here, let's import that in. And we can see here, you know, those blacks are doing really good. They're, they're, they're black, right? So, uh, can I expect much better. Now, do I want to do anything in here? Uh, as far as the gamma or anything like that, let's uh, zoom in on this and see if the, you know, if I change the gamma, you know, I could intensify that, you know, uh, some more. Um, I'm going to, I'll probably turn it down to right about here. Not necessary, but let's do that. And uh, now back in the laser module. Now this is uh, eight to 10%, depending on your laser power, eight to 10%. Uh, I went 9% with mine and uh, I didn't quite break through that because I was a little heavy handed on the black paint over that jungle green. Right. So I'm going to on this one, I'm actually going to go with my 10%. And again, that 1200 millimeters a minute or 48 inches a minute. That's a good speed. I'm happy with it. Uh, I'm going to do that. But my line density, I'm going to raster back and forth. No dithering. And my line density, I'm going to increase that. So for me, I'm going to go with a line density of 0 0.0015. 0 0.0015. So let's look at these settings here. Let's go maximum. So I've got my six watt laser uh, doing 10% of the power. Uh, now on the minimum power speed, instead of if I didn't want it to cycle from maximum to minimum, I do want some of that shading, right? But maybe I don't want it to go all the way down to zero. Maybe I want it to, you know, something. I could put in, you know, maximum of 10, minimum of five. So it cycles between those two and those uh, grayscale areas and all. Uh, when I ran it before, uh, I had 10% uh, max power, minimum power. I had it set at zero. Uh, so I could even, you know, um, I could, you know, probably go 5% or 3% or something and kind of so, it, you know, high there uh, and um, raster, no dithering and uh, calculate that out. Let that calculate. <clears throat> and um, uh, let's preview this. Now, when this previews, it's not going to show the image uh, because I'm on a white background. So I'll have to change the background color so you can see it. And it's going to be, because it is 10%, it's going to be very light in this preview, very light in this preview because it's only 10% power, right? So it's going to, the, the preview is going to look very light in the Vetric software. We won't see a very good, we'll get a good representation. It won't be a deep, dark color. It's going to be light, meaning that it's not going to, it's going to burn through our first layer of paint, right? It's not going to be too intense that it burns through all of our paint down to the white tile um, <clears throat> and everything. So uh, that is the process. And while this is processing out, while this is uh, previewing out or processing uh, on the simulation, I am going to pull up the picture that I want to do with you guys real quick. We're going to do a real quick one together, but this one uh, is, I want to do it. I want to do a tile pattern. I want to, I want to create, um, I want to create a frame, a wooden frame uh, that these tiles will go side by side in probably maybe three across and three down a nice square frame. Uh, or I could go long and narrow, whatever but I want to create a piece of wall art. Uh, now these are great for coasters and things. Throw some, like uh, Garrett said in his video, throw some cork on the back and all. Uh, they're great coasters. After it's engraved, your clear coat, you know, do a clear coat or two uh, to, you know, protect it, especially on the black tiles, clear coat those very well, uh, two coats on that. But, you know, that's great. 
could do some very cool things. Uh, pictures, family pictures, great gifts, way, great way to make money. This 15 cent tile, 20 bucks. What's up? Right. So very good markup on this. Um, it would sell easily for $20. Um, but uh, you could do pictures of people. You could do, um, you know, relatives, families, memorabilia stuff and all that. Well, I want to do a piece of wall art. OK, so what I want to do is um, let this uh, process out so we can get past the Hulk. And I want to spend just a few more minutes with you. Uh, we're going to have a short, quick night tonight. I'm going to do just a few more minutes with you uh, to lay out this image. And um, we're going to go from there. OK, so uh, as we can tell in the white background, uh, it's hard to see. Let's go ahead and change this background a little bit. Uh, let's go. Maple. Uh, no. What would be a good contrasting color? No. I can't do it on the black because uh, it's black, right? It's showing black burnt. So uh, I don't really have it. other than white. I don't have a good color. But you see how um, you see how dull it looks in here, uh, in everything. That's good. I don't want it real deep and dark. I just it's gonna be, it's gonna be an intense burn enough that it will uh, burn through that black paint. And I can see already, you know, the results in the teeth that uh, you know those those teeth are gonna be nice and green in that nose area, those hot spots. So I'm happy with that result. All right. So uh, we're going to go ahead. I'm not going to save this. Well, I'll save it in case you guys have questions and I got to come back to it or else that would suck. So uh, let's just call this Hulk. Uh, v Carve Pro. I got to go back one day and clean all this up. All right. So uh, let that save. <clears throat> okay. Okay. And so I'm going to create new. Now on this one, um, I want to go three tiles across, three tiles high. Now my tiles, even though they're four inch by four inch tiles, they're not quite four by four. Uh, they are actually about three and seven eighths. Uh, when I zeroed out on the corner and I moved over, uh, I landed perfectly exactly uh, where I started from opposite uh, at three and seven eighths. So I'm going to say that these tiles are probably technically about three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. So knowing that I'll use this number here and I'm going to multiply that by three and I'm going to multiply this one by three. Okay. If I wanted a square frame, right? If I wanted, let me, where's, where's my hand? If I wanted just, you know, a square wall art, right? those three tiles across, three tiles down. If I want to go a little bit longer, three tiles across, four tiles down, that type of thing, right? Okay. Um, and uh, all that happy jazz. Now, whatever number I uh, decide here, and let's go, uh, let's go 3.875 times four. Let's go four tall. Okay, so it's a little taller. I might have to go the other way. I can't remember what my picture looks like. I'm going to find out right now. Uh, material surface starting in the bottom left corner. I like starting off in the bottom left corner because I don't want to run tape measures and stuff against my tiles and take a chance of scratching my paint. I definitely don't want to put a pencil mark in the middle of my tile, you know, uh, to find that center. So I'm going to work off the bottom left corner when I'm working with the tiles. Uh, you guys can do whatever you want to do. All right, let's go back into full screen here. All right, so basically, um, imagine this work area here being our uh, three tiles, so 3.875 by 3.875, and uh, let's take this and snap that down here to this corner and go into our array tool, and let's go with uh, three four rows, three columns, and uh, I want a gap of 
0.375, right? Yeah. Uh, and copy that. No. I don't want to gap up 0.375. Zero. Zero. Okay. So imagine my tiles here, you know, inside of a nice uh, decorative wood frame or something like that. Use your imagination, right? Um, Rodney uh, asked a good question. We're going to stop here for a minute. Uh, Rodney asked a good question. Could this be done on glass? I don't know, Rodney. I honestly don't know. Right now I'm experimenting with the tile. So glass, that could be the next logical thing to try, right? Uh, painted glass. Uh, who knows? Because I know that I can't just laser engrave on a piece of uh, clear glass. The laser will just shoot right through it. What it what you can see through, it can see through. So I would have to paint it uh, black or something so it etches in the glass. Uh, so that's a good question. Uh, how do I sign up for the monthly training? Uh, you're going to, on the monthly training, you're going to go to digitalwoodcarver.com. When you get to digitalwoodcarver.com website under learn to carve one-on-one -on -one training, you're going to click on that. When that training page loads, you're going to scroll down to the bottom of the page until you get to uh, this form here. And uh, you have uh, three types of training options, a non-subscription by the hour, or a monthly subscription or an annual subscription. So you would choose which package you want. You would click on it, fill out your information, and Bob's your uncle. You're all done. Okay, so learn to carve, one-on-one -on -one carving, and choose your poison. Okay, so good question. Thank you for that, Mike. All right. Um, you can't quit early. I already cleared the whole night. There you go, right? Can't quit early. I already, uh, I already uh, worked the whole night. So imagine, imagine these are the tiles. And so uh, this picture is going to take up this whole area. So portions of this picture are going to be carved on this tile to create the whole thing. Now, for me, I would actually build the frame and get the tiles in place and everything and burn the whole thing at once, right? Uh, I wouldn't sit there and try to do each individual tile with it, its own segment of the project. Uh, I wouldn't try to break it up that way. Uh, if I were going to do it that way, if I were going to break it up and tile the tool pass, that would be the tile manager that does that. Uh, get it? Tile manager. Anyway, uh, if I were going to do that, the only reason I would be doing that is if I was making a tile puzzle where each little segment had its own little pattern or design. And when that puzzle was put in the correct place, then it brings out the picture, right? If it wasn't, then it wouldn't be. If I was making a tile puzzle, then I would laser engrave them individually, you know, uh, as it goes. Uh, or I would just build the frame to set them in and just not secure them or glue them down or anything like that. But when I finish that frame, this is going to be one solid piece, right, of individual tiles. <laughs> So we have our tiles in here, right? So let's go in, uh, let's look at our size here. Uh, once again, and let me write it down. So our overall size is 11.625 by 15.5. Okay, great, wonderful, good. All right, I'm going to come back to uh, GIMP and I'm going to close this. And uh, give it a second. I got a lot of things in my download. Okay. All right, back where we are here. Uh, I need to go down to the V's. Okay. All right. Settle down, guys. Settle down. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let's go into the magnifying glass and uh, control out. Uh, I like uh, Norse legend and uh, the you know the story of the Valkyries and everything. 
uh, and all that good jazz. Uh, so um, I wanted to do a, I want to do a Valkyrie piece of wall art. Uh, and uh, so uh, we got that now. Uh, this is for educational purposes. Uh, so I am using someone else's image here uh, and uh, their signature is right there. Uh, and uh, I'm going to give them credit. I'm going to let that signature laser engrave in. I could, you know, if I wanted to, I could come in and paint over that. But, you know, uh, someone did some beautiful artwork here. Uh, I'm going to laser engrave it and let it go in there because it's going to hang on my wall. I'm not selling it or anything. It's going to go in my house, uh, uh, you know, in my office um, and um, and all that cool stuff. So, uh, you know, credit where credit's due. This guy did a bad, bad mamma jamma job on this. All right, so first thing I got to do here is I got to size the image, scale the image, okay? Now, again, the resolution, 600 by 600, okay? 600 by 600, that's you, that's your magic number that you stay with uh, to be using the, the Big Daddy Gimpin, <laughs> the Big Gimpin uh, processor and all, 600 by 600 on your resolution. From there, you can change the image to whatever size you want, right? So in my case, uh, 11.625, by 15.5 and I probably should have looked at the image first to see what the actual image re uh, you know aspect ratio was and base it off that but I did right so uh, I'm gonna scale that up okay hold on you're trying to create an image uh, with a size of 604 megabytes scaling the image to the chosen size will make it use more memory than what is configured as maximum image size in the preferences dialog. All right. So I will have to uh, change those preferences in my image dialog. Okay. Woo, there's a belly button. All right. So let's hold down the control key and let's zoom back out. All right. So it's uh, scaled back up now. Awesome blossom. All right. And it's scaled to size and all that good stuff. Uh, do I need, do I want to um, uh, do anything as far as adjusting color and shading and stuff? I, I might let the whites pop more white back here, but really, no, I like that dark scene. What I do want it to do is highlight the whites a lot better. So around the wings here, uh, you know, they really stand out from that black laser engraving. Um, I could, you know, if I didn't want the background scene, I could sit there and, uh, you know, uh, clean up around her and make that all white uh, and everything and stuff and all. But I kind of want, I kind of want this, this image. So what I will do is I will manipulate and see if I can get the whites to pop a little bit white. Okay. A little bit more white. So shadows and highlights. Uh, let's see here. Uh, highlights. Let's see if we can bring up our. Says not responding. Give me a minute. Okay. Let's. Okay, that's really not doing anything for me. Let's see if the color adjustment. All right, shadows. Okay, so I'm going to get out of that. That didn't do anything for me. Uh, let's go with exposure. Let's see if we, see if I turn the black values down, that's, uh, you know, changing the exposure. I want to turn them up. Yeah. Yeah, I want those blacks to be black, but not so much that I lose the detail in the wing. Here, 
So let's see here. Um, slightly, slightly more black. Uh, the exposure. Oh, that's really blowing out those wings and all. Um, the highlights, right? White, that white tile is going to be coming through, right? So in the face and everything, I want to really bring out those highlights and stuff. And I am super stoked with that. Uh, let's see here. Let's, yeah, I want to, I want to bring those back up a little bit. I want those hot spots and those highlights around here. I want those, that white tile, I want it to really stand out. I'm happy with that. Um, it looks really good uh, and everything. And so now I'm going to, um, let's go back to close out Hulk, discard the changes. I'm done with him, the Cougar. All right, let's get back to our Valkyrie here. Uh, the Big Daddy Gimpin plug-in. Uh, I'm going to be doing this on tile, 600 uh, DPI. 100 by 100, I'm going to click OK. And I probably should have, uh, let me see how that scaled my, yeah, that's good. OK, so let's uh, scale this back up. All right, now I need to invert. The colors. This is the the white tile painting on the white or carving on the white tile. So I have to invert the colors. So color invert. Yeah. Oh, that's gonna look awesome. Okay. So I'm really happy with that. So now I'm gonna export that out. Export as uh, Valkyrie. Let's see. What do we got here? Uh, Valkyrie. Uh, processed. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Click on export. And again, I want 100% quality. And export. Done. All right. Coming out of here, going back into the Vetric, I'm going to import that image. Okay. And I'm going to scale that image up. Uh, what was my number? 11.625 by 15.5044. That's good. All right. And, uh, I'm happy with that. It looks weird in the Vetric software. It looks like a cartoon, but that's good. That's what I want. I want those blacks. That's where that laser is firing and everything. Um, so I'm happy with that. Uh, let's get rid of our lines. I don't want those uh, squares in there. I don't want those rectangles in there. That would suck. All right, so we'll get rid of that. Uh, we'll come over here to our laser module. Um, this is going to be 85%. I'm laser engraving in the uh, white tile, so I want the high power. So black tile, low power, white tile, high power, right? Uh, so 85%. My 48 was good for the Cougar. I'm going to keep that. Uh, I'm going to go back to the 0 .043. Those are numbers you'll have to play with uh, for yourself and everything and um, and all. Uh, but uh, I'm going to go back to that line spacing and I'm going to calculate that out. Okay. So now that's going to take a minute to calculate. There's a lot going on there. Uh, in the meantime, let's answer some questions. Um, uh, let's see here. Okay, there are 
no questions. You guys got any questions? Uh, I, you guys were having a conversation, uh, but um, uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Let me know. And uh, just to answer uh, Mike, um, as for the annual training, just so you know, non-subscription, $45 an hour, right? That's by the hour. Subscription, $10 a month gets you one hour a month plus two free project downloads, two 3D model free project downloads and things. Um, annually uh, is 12 months for the price of 11. So you save 10 bucks. Uh, you get 12 hours of training to use anytime, not just once a month. You could use all 12 hours in one block, two hours here, two hours there, two hours there, two hours there, one hour you know, here and there. It doesn't matter, but you have 12 hours to use and you get 24 free projects, uh, two projects a month emailed to you. And uh, while that is uh, uh, processing out, which is done processing, but just to give you a general idea, let's uh, let's let that uh, preview. And while that's processing on the preview, uh, let's go into Aspire for a minute. I don't know why I had that um, that comment up, but that was the wrong comment. But we're going to go into Aspire for a second, and we're going to go into uh, – I'm going to show you what July's projects looked like. Uh, so let's go back into full screen here. And um, – On the Valkyrie, I'm just going to save as. Save that so I can close the GIMP. All right. <clears throat> okay, so this is the, um, let me turn on. Um, so this July, uh, what the, the two projects for the month was a home sweet home sign, right? That was one model that they got. Uh, and the other one was a blank, uh, deer frame, uh, with the model that could be created. And, um, I create the models. I build the models, uh, and create them from scratch. So, uh, with my, uh, modeling software and everything. Uh, so you get custom made projects uh, each month. You get two a month uh, and everything. And uh, July's projects for the subscribers uh, was this deer project, a blank, so they could carve whatever they wanted in there. And also the home sweet home version, uh, which was uh, this project here. Right. So uh, those projects um, are very worthwhile. You know, the ten dollars a month or $110 a year, you get 24 of these types of projects and things, well worth it. You would spend, if you go to designandmake.com uh, and you buy a model, you're spending anywhere from 10 to $25 just for the one model, right? Think about that. So uh, that's my marketing ploy for the day. Okay, um, coming back here. So here is the uh, result of the laser engraving uh, and everything. I'm kind of stoked to see what this would actually look like on the tile, uh, the tile, the tile uh, frame. Uh, when I do this one, uh, when I laser engrave this one, I will, um, I'll be sure to show it off to you guys uh, for sure. Uh, I'm going to be real happy with it. Uh, now I might do a version also. I'll go get, uh, you know, uh, nine more tiles. And I may do a version where I actually clean out the background and just have the Valkyrie uh, engraved on a white background. But I'm kind of stoked with this. Uh, I like that kind of mystic look. Uh, and also, um, that's going to be a lot of laser burning. But it's going to be pretty cool. All right. So, um, and it looks rough right here because I'm in a low resolution on the simulation quality. 
uh, if I, it would take longer to uh, process uh, if I, if we were to preview this in a higher resolution, where's my zoom at? Zoom, zoom, zoom. Preview selected. We'll let that run out in a higher resolution to see what it looks like. But in the meantime, let's go back to here and, um, so, uh, think about that. Uh, yeah. Say as far as saving, yes. Save your projects and stuff like that. I'm not saving that cause, uh, these are one offs. Um, I'll come back and redo them, uh, later down the road. This is just for, you know, training purposes and all. So I won't say, but you guys save, save early and save often, save your projects so you can go back and edit them. Uh, thanks Darwin for that. Darwin's always yelling at me about saving. Um, let's see here. Uh, if my laser is growable, can I export in VCar Pro to use uh, JPEG? Uh, that's what my laser uses. So uh, I believe there is a growable post processor. Uh, there's a Gerbil post processor in the Vetric that you can uh, save that toolpath on them. I believe there is. You would have to look in your uh, list of post processors. Uh, and all my list is only limited to the five that I use, but you might have to look in the list and um, uh, and there should be a Gerbil. And as a matter of fact, when this is done processing, we'll take a quick pick, quick peek in there, Amos and C. We'll check. Um, let's see here. All right. So once again, let's go back into here. Uh, yeah, I think that's going to be a pretty awesome piece of wall art for me. Uh, and uh, I like it. You know, I'll see how it lays and grays, uh, you know. And uh, if I don't want to make any changes, I'll go back in and make changes and do it again. Uh, I kind of got a thing for Valkyries. They're pretty cool. So uh, <laughs> we'll go there. But let's take a quick look uh, real quick to answer Amos's question here. Uh, in the Vetric, if I go into File, Open Application Data Folder, and uh, go to Post P Folder, All right, let's see what they have under miscellaneous. Uh, okay, that's the miscellaneous ones. Uh, let's go back to... Right here, yeah, I knew they did. Uh, Gerbil inch and Gerbil millimeter, Amos, right here. Okay, so that's in your Vetric. Uh, that's built right into your Vetric, so you can use those post processors to work with your laser. All right, cool beans. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So, GIMP, and once again, um, uh, the link, I put it in the chat earlier, but uh, the the, the add-on to GIMP, GIMP.org is where you can download GIMP. Uh, and then uh, from infinitelaser.us, um, you can get the uh, the Big Daddy Gimpin, <laughs> the Big Gimpin plug-in uh, by Sean Murray. And, um, and that's under, if you look in the menu here, um, you'll see that under, here, let's make it bigger so you can actually see it. Uh, you can see it here. Photo processing scripts, right? So infinitelaser.us, photo processing scripts is that menu. And it's $30, but well worth it. Save a lot of time saving stuff. Um, and uh, Sean did a great job on, um, you know, uh, his processing and everything. And, uh, you know, I love uh, things uh, like this. Like, I mean, you know, think of like tiles with these type of, you know, uh, that old school, uh, you know, cars and gas stations and, you know, just, you know, the 50s kind of thing. 
uh, really retro kind of coaster sets uh, and stuff. I mean, awesome, right? Uh, you know, so uh, that would be pretty cool. But uh, the uh, Infinite Laser, I will put all these links in the bottom of the video. Uh, once this class is done and the video kind of processes and stuff, I'll put all these links in there as well, gimp.org and infinitelaser.us uh, and all. And um, yeah, and also definitely check out uh, 3D Print Farm uh, without, uh, you know, Garrett. Uh, Garrett Garrett makes a good video, but uh, in his, uh, in his uh, video, he actually even shows a laser. His is a four watt laser uh, and it's a $200 laser, complete little laser system with its own little gantry and everything. Uh, and he did all this. Uh, but he got some great results with his, but uh, 3D Print Farm, uh, go give him a subscribe and a like. He's got just a few videos, but two videos, how to make money with your desktop laser. And then the other video uh, was um, crazy technique for etching on white ceramic. And that's the Norton method that we discussed uh, tonight. Uh, so those uh check him out 3d print farm uh garrett give him some love thanks garrett for uh inspiring me to get a little bit dig a little bit deeper into this and show how to do it in vetric instead of light burn uh and things like that so uh pretty cool stuff all right i don't see any other questions but with that um if you guys have any questions, now's the time to ask because we're about to wrap it up here uh, and everything and all that heavy jazz. So I'll give it just a few minutes because uh, I know what I say is delayed by what you hear. Uh, so we'll get a few minutes. Uh, Michael, thanks for staying up past your bedtime and watching me. Hopefully you enjoyed this uh, and uh, had some fun. I don't know how to unpause, <laughs> but uh, I, uh, uh, Crystal, you have to tell me what he meant by that. Um, Steven, thanks for uh, giving the uh, shout out on the training and all you other guys that are kind of encouraging on training. Uh, Mike, uh, thanks for asking about the training and stuff and your interest in it. Awesome. Uh, every little bit helps, right? You know, and stuff. Uh, so uh, one of there. Uh, now let's stop for a minute. I do have a question. Um, I passed it up here. Uh, it was underneath Amos's. Is it possible to laser an image into the center of cast acrylic? No. Okay. Those lasers, have you ever seen those crack cast acrylic blocks that shoot uh, the beams in and it creates that image in the middle of the, that acrylic block? Uh, that takes a very specialized laser uh, that goes around and shoots those images in through there to create that, you know, that pocket, that image in the middle. Uh, you cannot laser engrave and cast acrylic. However, however, um, you could cheat a little bit. Um, you could uh, laser engrave something like this on tile and, and give it a cat, you know, embed that in cast resin, but also you could, print out a nice image and pour resin, put that image in there on translucent uh, print paper and pour another layer. And uh, when it hardens up into its final block, then you have a image in the middle of your, your acrylic that you, you would, you would print it out on translucent film, clear film. Uh, and you could, uh, you know, pour your own resin pour and everything, make sure all the bubbles are out, pour your first layer, let it settle up. Uh, and all, uh, get all the bubbles out of it, put your film in with your image on it, pour your second layer, you know, whatever big of, you know, whatever size it is, it could be all kinds of different sizes, but that's, that's a little cheat to do that way. But, uh, no, to create those images and stuff that they do inside of those cubes, that takes a very specialized laser and it's not one that you're going to find in a hobby type situation. Uh, so good question on that. Lenny, let's see here. Um, 
Carl, can a picture from a digital camera be used in this process? Absolutely, yes. Pictures of your kids, your grandkids, your mama, your daddy, everybody. Pictures, yes. Pictures you take of scenery and wildlife and, and all that. Yeah, that's what this process is for, is, is you know laser engraving those images. Now, I use that cougar. That cougar was a real image uh, you know, that was taken with a digital camera and processed and stuff. Uh, the Valkyrie was an art drawing. The Incredible Hulk was an art drawing. But no, absolutely, you can use take pictures and engrave them on tile, right? So yes, um, and everything. And uh, <clears throat> would like a laser. Uh, would like to laser black granite uh, for office doors and desk names and plates and everything. Okay, um, laser engraving granite. Uh, that is a different process. I'm not sure how much power is needed from a laser to engrave granite. I know that, and I could be wrong. If somebody has a, one of our six watt lasers and they've laser engraved granite with it, let me know. Cause I've never done it. But uh, usually that's like a 60 and a 90 watt laser uh, for laser engraving granite, like headstones, tombstones, uh, office door plaques, name plates, and things like that. Uh, absolutely doable but I think the wattage needs to be up a little higher than like a four or six watt laser. You're not going to get uh, what you want out of that uh, and all. You're going to need your 40, 50, 60, up to 90 watt lasers for that, uh, Rodney. Um, all right. And uh, as Rodney Prover says, if you like this video or you got, you think you got something in there, give it a try. 15 cents at Lowe's. I don't know how much they are at Home Depot. White ceramic tiles. You can get them in different sizes. Uh, I went with the four by four white tiles. Um, 15 cents a piece. Uh, I spent on the 12 tiles and all the paint that I bought, I spent 34 bucks. Uh, and um, this right here, once I put the cork on it and all that stuff, a uh, $20 tile, uh, I made my money back in just one tile, right? So, you know, got to love it. 15, 20 bucks or, you know, whatever you want, uh, you know, but yeah, you could definitely uh, get out of that, you know, some different art, uh, you know, so I'm really looking forward to see what this wall art piece looks like and, and seeing what that does uh, and everything. Uh, shout out to the artist. I can't, I don't know his name. Uh, I can't read it very well, uh, but uh, bang up job on painting that. Uh, and, um, you know, so um, all right, everybody. Until next time, I'll see you soon.